Hi. Today we're going to talk about complex impedances. We've been talking about the fact that inductors and capacitors cause a phase change between the current and the voltage when we have a closed circuit as shown in these images. <clears throat> When we're trying to do analysis of these circuits, our analysis process is going to be exactly the same as what we studied in Chapter 2. Notice for the circuit on the left, we can basically write an equation around the closed loop, writing the sum of the voltages around a closed loop is equal to 0, KVL. <clears throat> when we look at the, um, the current across the inductor, we know that the current across the inductor, if we look back, uh, we have that if the current is I sub m times the sine of omega t plus theta, that the voltage must be the derivative of that times the magnitude of the inductance. <clears throat> we can therefore substitute and we get the voltage across that inductor as omega l times I sub m times the cosine of omega t plus theta. If we convert that to phasor form, we know we just have to take the magnitude, that omega L I sub M, and then the phase, theta. And so we have omega L I sub M times the angle of theta. <clears throat> if we look at the current, we know that we can convert from a sine form to our standard cosine form by subtracting 90 degrees from theta. So we see here that the current is the magnitude I sub M with an angle of theta minus 90. If we plot these phasors on a complex plane, we know that since we're dealing with an inductor, we know that based on our Eli, E-L-I, that our voltage must lead the current by 90 degrees. And if we plot those, we see that. Notice here that we have that the voltage leads the current by 90 degrees. We see the peak of the voltage is 90 degrees in front of the peak of the current. Again, if we think about going counterclockwise around the unit circle, we see that the voltage <clears throat> uh, past the zero crossing first, and then we have the current going 90 degrees later. <clears throat> And so here we have that if we want to determine the impedance, remember Ohm's law, V equals IR, we know that for complex numbers, V equals I times Z. Z is the impedance, that complex value uh, that includes the resistance plus the reactance. <clears throat> and so... For an inductor, all we have is reactants. Everything is imaginary. Here we have the de definition of the reactants, J omega L. Right? We can solve for that using V divided by I to get the value of Z, again Ohm's law. And so we have omega L I sub M with an angle of theta <coughs> um, divided by I sub M with an angle of theta minus 90 degrees. <clears throat> And that gives us omega L um, with an angle of 90 degrees. <clears throat> okay. Impedances that are purely imaginary are also called reactances. For capacitors, we've talked that <clears throat> capacitors, we know the current is CdV dt, and so therefore we know that with our ICE <clears throat> acronym, that the current leads the voltage by 90 degrees for capacitors. Here we're given the value of the voltage. We know we could rewrite that as V sub M times the cosine of omega T plus theta minus 90. Again, converting to our standard form. <clears throat> and then we can <clears throat> come up with the current omega C V sub M times the cosine of omega T plus theta. Okay. And here we have in phasor form. Okay. The current leads the voltage by 90 degrees in capacitance. We see that here in the unit circle phasor form. We see it here in our time domain form. The, the current leads the voltage by 90 degrees. Okay.
coming up with the impedance. Again, given the voltage across the capacitor, we have the current across the capacitor. We can just use Ohm's law for complex numbers, Z equals V over I, and we get 1 over omega C with an angle of minus 90 degrees. Okay. And we are <clears throat> here we have for resistance, everything is in phase. We have no phase change for a <clears throat> resistive circuit. The voltage and the current are totally in phase. No phase change. Okay. So here we have an exercise. A voltage is applied to a 0.25 Henry inductance. We have <clears throat> omega is 200. Okay. The, find the impedance of the inductance, the phase current, and the phasor voltage. Here we can solve for it. We're given <clears throat> um, the value of V sub S. I didn't write it here. The value of V sub S was uh, that omega was 200 T. <clears throat> Therefore, Z sub L is J omega L. And so we just plot, put in the values and we get J50. Remember, J is our imaginary number, our imaginary axis. Here we have totally, totally imaginary. All reactants, we have I sub L is 2 with an angle of minus 90 degrees. Okay. Here's our voltage in phasor form, 100 with an angle of 0. Here's our current, 2 with an angle of minus 90 degrees. <clears throat> I think I'm recording. <clears throat> if we look at another exercise, again we have the same source voltage. We know that omega is 200, and now we're going to apply that voltage to a capacitor. We have to determine the impedance, the phasor current, and the phasor voltage. Remember <clears throat> that the impedance is V over I. We know that V <clears throat> is <clears throat> 100 with an angle of 0. We know that we can determine the uh, impedance across the capacitance as omega C with an angle of 90, or alternatively, 1 over omega C with an angle of positive 90. Remember that uh, J is equal to the square root of minus 1. <clears throat> so we get 50 with an angle of minus 90 for Z sub C. We can solve for the current. V over Z, and we get 2 with an angle of 90 degrees. Okay, We have the value of the voltage in phasor form. We have the value of the current in phasor form based on our standard equations. A third exercise. Uh, now we're going to put the voltage across a resistor. We expect that there will not be any phase change between our voltage and our um, current because we're going across a resistor and there is no phase change. We know that we can just use standard Ohm's law. Um, Z equals V over I. I equals <clears throat> um, V over R. For a resistor, Z is all real. V, I'm sorry, Z is equal to R. <clears throat> Solving for the current, V over R, we get 2 with an angle of 0. Notice when we plot it, Everything is in phase. The current and the voltage are both in phase with each other. Okay. We can look at the answers for <clears throat> the three examples. Here we have an inductor, a phase change between the voltage and the current by 90 degrees. The voltage leads the current. Alternatively, for a capacitor, the current leads the voltage, or the voltage lags the current by 90 degrees for a capacitor. And for a resistor, they're totally in phase. <clears throat>